Today, the doors of more than 3,500 mosques are open for worshippers in Kazakhstan. They were built in different times. The oldest ones were erected several centuries ago. Many were opened just recently. Some of them are rightfully considered as valuable architectural monuments of the country, important cultural and historical buildings of different eras. Wooden Mosque in Jharkhand is a unique building. Islamic architecture in combination with the appearance of a Buddhist temple is a very rare finding in Central Asia. The origins of the style's combination should be sought in the history of the time when the temple was built, which is the end of the 19th century. Back then, the Great Silk Road passed through Jharkhand, which is located on the border with China. The proximity of the Middle Kingdom influenced not only trade, the symbiosis of cultures left an imprint on many areas of life. The Chinese architect Han Pike was invited to the city for the construction of the mosque. Architect Hon Pique and his associates began its construction in 1887 and completed it in 1895, and it still stands. They built this mosque without a single nail, only using wood. Funds for the construction of the mosque were raised by worshippers, ordinary residents of Jharkhand. However, the history has preserved the name of one of the philanthropists who made the main contribution. This is Walibai Yuldashev, a merchant of the First Guild, an honorary resident of the city of Verni. His participation in the construction of the mosque is evidenced by an inscription in Arabic at the entrance. Who wants to know the owner of this mosque? This is me, Walibai Yuldashev. Walibai Valiahun Yuldashev took on himself all organizational work. The money was not enough. Construction required a lot of spending. They counted people. A thousand and fifty people were invited for construction, including 37 craftsmen who worked with wood and were able to connect wood pieces without a single nail. In the 19th century, wood quite often served as a material for the construction of mosques on the territory of Kazakhstan. Many wooden temples have been preserved to this day. But there was no profit to transport wood from Siberia to Jharkhand. The lack of a direct river route was a major obstacle. Therefore, for the construction of the mosque, Hon Pique chose a strong tree, the Tanshan spruce. Its life expectancy sometimes can be up to 350 years. Logging was carried out 200 kilometers away from Jharkhand in the Aksu and Ketman Mountains, after which the material was delivered to the place of future construction. For five years, processing and drying of wood took place, and the construction of the mosque itself took three months of the summer. Chinese architect Hong Pique, he worked here the entire time for free. In fairness, it should be said that there is no documentary evidence that can confirm that Hong Pique worked for free. So the gratuitous work of an architect from the Middle Kingdom can safely be considered one of the many legends associated with the Jharkhand Mosque. By the way, another legend indicates the opposite. Hong Pique was afraid that his work would not be paid, and in order to avoid the risk, he came up with a trick. The front column was oblique and curved. People told him that the column is not straight. He said, when you pay me, I will straighten it up. Once he was paid, he told the workers what places to hit, and the column got straight. The location of Jharkhand the Silk Road contributed to its rapid growth and development. After its founding in 1882, just five years later, by the time the mosque began to be built, the city's population already exceeded 50,000 people. Carpenters, builders and artists 
people of many nationalities and professions took part in the construction of the temple and its design. The workforce mostly consisted of Muslim population, Kazakhs, Uyghurs and Dungans. The Kazakhs made their ornaments, the Uyghurs and the Dungans their flower ornaments. They all painted differently. After the construction, the Jarkent Mosque experienced a lot of tests. For example, the devastating earthquake of 1910, as a result of which the city was almost completely destroyed. The mosque survived the earthquake, but cracks appeared on the domes. Then, during the years of the Soviet Union, for almost 50 years, the temple was used to store grain. In the late 1970s, the mosque attracted the attention of scientists. A unique building was restored after which it became a museum. We are now in a large prayer hall. The length of this hall is 54.5 meters, the width is 29 meters, and the height is 22 meters. The large hall is supported by 122 wooden columns. Women prayed on the second floor, men on the first floor, respectively. During prayer, it accommodated up to 1,500-1,600 people. There is no information about the fate of the Chinese architect Hong Pike, who built the mosque in Jarkent, neither in the Kazakh nor Chinese chronicles. Only numerous legends, some of which contradict each other. According to one of them, the architect was brutally punished in the Middle Kingdom because he erected a temple in a foreign country, thereby revealing the carefully guarded centuries-old secrets of Chinese construction. There is a sad side to the story. When he returned to China, Inawa reports it was written that his head was cut off. Some legends say that he allegedly married a local beauty, changed his name and stayed here. Others say that he was executed. Alhamdulillah <laughs> Rabbil the Pavlodar Mosque was built in our time. It was erected at the junction of the 20th and 21st centuries. It is named after Mashgorzhe Sopkopiola. He was a Kazakh poet, ethnographer, historian, and collector of oral folk art. Esteemed Islamic scholar and a man of truly encyclopedic knowledge, he was closely acquainted with Abai, corresponded with the writer Fyodor Dostoevsky, translated the works of Alexander Pushkin into his native language. And today the mosque named after him is rightfully considered the main place of spiritual unity of Muslims in Pavlodar, the city near which he was born. Working on the project, the creators of the temple tried to expand the familiar framework of Islamic architecture. The images should be inspired by the imagination of the designer. How will he interpret it? What conceptual things he will include? What will he say? But in any case, it should be compositionally attractive, and it should be pleasing to the eye. In general, this is the main purpose of architecture. Since we enjoy architecture with our eyes, we feel the inner space, its convenience, functionality. These things are must in architecture. Religion, it's not a dogma either. It does not stand still. It must develop together with society, with knowledge. The first stone of the main mosque of Pavlodar was laid in 1999, and the main work began a year later. Part of the money for the construction was raised by worshippers. In Pavlodar, as in most cities of Kazakhstan, many mosques and temples were built on donations. Just like at the Blagoveshensk Cathedral, it was all sponsorship of patrons and, of course, general donations. 
I believe the major contribution was made by wealthy people who don't want to reveal their surnames. They do not advertise themselves. They didn't do this for the sake of advertising. But even the hundred tenge from the believer was such a feasible contribution to the construction of this mosque. Many codes that are important to Islam have been encrypted in the project. For example, the building itself is put on a foundation in the form of an eight-pointed star. This is Rup al-His, one of the symbols of Islam. The height of which of the four minarets of the mosque is 63 meters, according to the age of the Prophet Muhammad. The blue dome is made in a form that to some people resembles Shanirak, to others an Arab cloak, and some people find in it attributes to heroes of Kazakh fairy tales, knightly armor of the Batirs, or the national women's headdress. The creator's particular pride is the facade of the building, the design of which was approached with particular care. There is such a great architect, Mario Botta, he is Swiss, and he works like a god with a brick. We took this curly masonry from him. Local storekeepers, masons, they laid out these bricks perfectly. Facade brick is of apricot color. It is very cool color, because in the summer it is of a straw-like color, a sunny color, and in winter it acquires an apricot color. The building itself projects warmth. The unique color of the building is given by ornaments that adorn the mosque from the inside. Patterns in authentic Kazakh national style organically coexist with religious standards and surahs from the Quran. One of the most remarkable details of the interior decoration is the Zumrat crystal chandelier, which is located in the main hall of the mosque. Masters from two states, Russia and Uzbekistan, worked hard to make it. The dome of this mosque is crowned by a unique chandelier. The chandelier is made of pure rock crystal. It was delivered from the springs of Russian Siberia. The cut of the chandelier was done at the Tashkent factory. If my memory serves me right, 434 bulbs illuminate the chandelier. The mosque is surrounded by a huge park, almost six hectares. Even at the design stage, a garden on the territory was planned. Almost from the first days after the opening, the stone became its integral part, in addition to the rose bushes brought from Turkey. A large stone was brought to the construction site from Bayanaul, from the homeland of Mashgurja Subkopiola. But our people are sometimes ignorant, and often, after visiting the mosque, they came up and put their hands on the stone, which is forbidden according to Quran. Then it was decided to put it into the depths of this garden. Now it is standing there, in the back of this garden. After the opening of the Mashhur Jusup Mosque in 2001, it became the largest prayer house in Kazakhstan for that time. In addition, it gained the status of one of the main attractions of Pavlodar, known far beyond the city borders. I have been working here since 2004. Back then, the Friday prayer hall was only half full. Now, on Friday prayers, the hall is completely full. Since the opening day, the mosque of Mashkozhusub Kupiola has become the most important center of the spiritual life of Pavlodar. It received the status of one of the main architectural attractions of the city, known far beyond its borders. Guests of our city, our region, who come from other countries, from Europe, from Asia, visit the Mashhur Jusup Mosque. They are all Muslim, non-Muslim. They have the right to go to the mosque. We do not forbid anyone. Therefore, the guests of our city, they visit our mosque, and they, of course, admire the architectural creation. And plus, the aura of this place is different from other places. 
построение с созданием и плюс к этому аура этой мечети она отделяется она отличается не от других мест After almost 20 years since the construction of the Mashkur Jasub Mosque, it is still considered one of the most interesting and original examples of Islamic architecture in Kazakhstan. It was built in the modern style, one of the first mosques to be built in this style. I attended the opening of this mosque, therefore it is in a way closer to my heart. The original solutions used in the work of the mosque project were appreciated not only by the worshippers. Many experts believe that the mosque of Mashkur Jasub can be considered a kind of reference point, the best example of Islamic architecture in the country. At this stage, it can be safely used as a reference sample for other mosques in Kazakhstan, like the Sultan Ahmed Mosque in Istanbul. It also serves as an example. Она уже тоже примерно служит. In July 2012, Pavlodar Mosque ceased to be considered the largest in the country. The Temple of Hazret Sultan, erected in the capital of Kazakhstan, took the lead. It is named after Hoja Ahmed Yasawi a poet and a philosopher who lived in the 12th century. It is worth saying that there are no mosques of such an impressive size, not only in Kazakhstan, but throughout Central Asia. Oh, this an amazing building. It's really, really beautiful. Um, when you come in, you can feel the energy so positive. It's a really spiritual place. I never can imagine to be in a place like this. It's amazing for me. This building is quite magnificent, if not glorious. It has a beautiful light that shimmers through the very high ceilings with an amazing chandelier in the center of the ceiling inside that reflects an amazing abundance of light, shimmering light. It's quite beautiful with turquoise, gold, white accents, and uh, beautiful carpeting. After the opening of the Hazret Sultan Mosque, its author Sagandik Janbulatov built several mosques which organically fit into the architectural landscape of Nur Sultan. This temple, the construction of which ended in the spring of 2018, bears a beautiful poetic name, the Flower of Allah. This is explained by the fact that the dome of the mosque looks like an inverted lotus flower. The official name sounds different. According to the decision of the spiritual administration of Muslims of Kazakhstan, the mosque was named after Riskildi Khaja. This is one of the residents of the city who has invested a lot in the construction of the city, in the construction of mosques, and he himself took a pilgrimage. Work on the mosque project began in 2016. Funds for its construction, as in the case of Pavlodar, were raised through donations from worshippers. When the project of the Flower of Allah was presented to the public, many were surprised. The appearance of the temple was too different from the usual appearance of mosques. However, the architect had every reason for a new approach and creative experiments. There are only two strict requirements in the canons of mosque construction. This mihrab should be oriented towards Mecca, and women and men should be separated. That's it. The rest is left to your imagination. The building of the minaret was built in the form of a pen, which in Islam is considered sacred, symbolizing wisdom, script, knowledge, and signs. There are few analogs of such an architectural solution in the world, but despite the originality of the design, the appearance of the mosque is not the only reason to consider it a truly unique structure. Keeping up with the achievements of scientific and technological progress, the temple was equipped with alternative energy sources, solar panels, with a total area of more than a thousand square meters. Uh, 
We process the solar energy that we provide ourselves. We transfer surplus electricity to the city. In the world, there are three objects with such technology. This is a mosque in Kazakhstan, one in China, and one in Dubai. The first mosque in the world with zero energy consumption. The last mosque today designed by Sahundak Bulatov opened recently in the summer of 2019. And that the appearance of the Flower of Allah, according to experts, was stylistically very close to the avant-garde and postmodernism, then this time the appearance of this building is more reminiscent of classical examples of Islamic architecture. We do not repeat styles. We take some experience and all our elements are made according to our style. Otherwise, we are not architects if we do not create our own style. Repetition is dangerous. Painstaking work was done to ensure that the mosque acquired authentic features that are unique to Kazakhstan. According to the architect, the idea was successful and now there is every reason to consider the building as a model of authentic national style. Therefore, if you look at the mosque, you will see that over 60-70% of Kazakh ornaments are used here. Of course, we use Arabic, but the fact is that the entrance itself was made in an unusual style. This entrance is similar to the mausoleum of Khaja Ahmed Yasawi. At first glance, it may seem that the mosque is quite compact and even chamber, but this feeling is deceptive. In fact, the mosque can accommodate up to 2,000 worshippers simultaneously. An important factor for this part of the city, before the temple was built, the residents of this part of the city used to look for prayer places in other parts of the capital. The space has a lot of air, and this district, the railway station district, has become more comfortable, more culturally significant. One of the difficulties faced by the authors of the Raisa Na Mosque design is that it was originally designed for construction in a rather small, limited area. But the creators made every effort to ensure that the temple became an integral part of Nur Sultan, organically blending into the structure of the residential district of the Kazakh capital. The fact is that the space in front of and on the side, we gave it a bigger space, although before there was not enough space, so that in the warm period, in the holy month of Ramadan, people can gather on the street. The interior of the new mosque of the capital projects peace and tranquility, as probably any temple should do. It was possible to achieve this due to the verified solutions, both in the selection of materials and in the applied color solutions. The mosque itself is made of beige material. This is travertine. These are various plastic elements, and if you look, it's all made in snow white, gentle pastel soft colors. All this emphasizes that the name of the mosque is dedicated to a woman. For many centuries, domes have been the hallmark of every mosque. Both ancient and modern architects approach the choice of material for them with particular care. After all, this part of the temple, visible from all sides, symbolizing the firmament, has always been one of the most important elements of the structure. In the Risa Anna Mosque, copper was chosen as the main material for the dome. Many do not see that it is copper. These are natural, specially aged copper domes. I believe that there is no other copper dome anywhere in Kazakhstan. First of all, it is very expensive. Second of all, if you notice, the color of the dome is of a sky blue color. This is an unusual color. You can't just choose it on a computer. Representatives of more than 130 nationalities live in Kazakhstan. For them, it is a natural thing to respect other cultures and religions. Muslim mosques, Orthodox churches, and Catholic cathedrals peacefully coexist in every city of the country. The temples have long become an integral part of the spiritual, cultural, and religious life of the Republic, demonstrating a unique history of the country. <laughs>